welcome to another episode of the F Theory Podcast. Uh, it's me, Joel. And I'm Mike. Um, today, we're going to talk about how infuriating it was <laughs> to set this up and go into the details behind uh, kind of what it takes to record something like this um, and kind of the <sighs> trials and tribulations there. You know, the funny thing about this episode actually is like we have been talking about making this episode for a while and we always <laughs> thought it was gonna be fun you know it was like one of those projects that you put off because like your expectations of it you're like kind of mildly aware that they're probably not going to reach those expectations but you know we're like we're gonna enjoy this one and uh and then we finally got here to do it and have we ever taken so long to start recording before no to, to put it into perspective we normally we're set to start basically right at five on saturdays that's when we like to record um it just kind of works for both of our schedules and it's mm. currently seven thirty, so it's two and a, two and a half hours to simply it, start hit hit record it uh, looks way worse for me because i'm starting at eight so yeah. i'm thinking i'm still gonna get to bed at a normal time and here we are 10 30 exactly, so yeah. so what what happened man um well I think maybe to start, let's talk about like our requirements and kind of what it is that we were trying to do. Um, like I would say it was, I think it was November when I first, maybe December when I first proposed this to you. And I'd originally said, Hey, let's do a podcast where we just kind of talk and go over things. And I had mm -hmm. the idea of doing like, you know, audio only, which is kind of the traditional podcast format. And I, I kind of didn't say that. I kind of just assumed that that's what it would be. And then when we were starting to go over the details, like, oh, yeah, so we're just going to, you know, record all of our video, right? And then we'll post it on YouTube. And I was like, uh, that's going <laughs> to make things a little bit more difficult, especially since uh, we're far apart. He's in Toronto. I'm in Vancouver. So that's there's a serious amount of delay there in terms of trying to transmit live video back and forth, um, considering we don't have budget for like a pro video recording, whatever that kind of stuff setup is you'd have with, a, you know, like a TV show or whatever. Um but yeah, so he's like, okay, well, we're going to do video, which kind of adds that requirement. So I think what we decided on is what you're seeing now is essentially, you know, two separate video feeds um, of our webcams and then also high quality audio from both of our machines, which is <laughs> uh, essentially 320 kilobits stereo audio. So no, no Skype mono bullshit. Can there. we, can we actually, can we interject here and in, in, for a sec, we got to go back in time yeah, because, um, Really, the issue is that Joel and I have been working together on shit for a long time. We just like love making sounds and like we just kind of relate to each other easily, like production wise. So when I moved out here, I mean, like not only was I kind of far in the beginning, but, you know, at least I could visit Vancouver. But when I moved out east, uh, we just needed to figure out a way to work with each other. And we were doing it through like Discord and stuff like that. And uh, we were never able to get the audio quality to be like Full, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing worse than like calling your producer friend and like playing, you know, music, and then you've got your like phone there, and you're like, you check this new beat out, and you're holding your phone against your speaker, and like all they're hearing is like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, we needed to figure this out. Like, we're you know, we're intelligent, we can figure this out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, really, it came down to just first of all trying to get a direct stream, and the only way for me to do that was to have essentially one audio interface running Ableton, okay? And then we're gonna literally imagine my computer as if it's two computers, but you've got another audio interface receiving the output of my main computer, and that input is now sending audio to Joel through whatever program you're using by using that interface as the driver. So I have to split it, route it out of the computer, back in the computer, and then it goes into Discord or whatever <laughs> we're using or Skype, and it gets to him on the other end and it's like 64 kbps like it's just not great and it's mono right yeah. so so we did that for a while and then joel uh saved both of our asses by finding Teamspeak. yeah and technically speaking you can get the same with discord pro or whatever it's i wouldn't say it's quite the same but with Teamspeak, you get a lot of that functionality where you can just set it to opus video or opus audio which is almost equivalent to uh, 320 kilobits per second. And with TeamSpeak, you, you basically pay for your own server. And, you know, it costs money, but it's honestly pennies per month. Like, it's so cheap that to compare that to the amount of time you spend angry at Discord for not working. But to be fair, you're getting a free product with Discord. So it's like, yeah. you know, it, it sometimes is better to pay a small fee to actually get a dedicated server that, you know, it does have its hiccups here and there. But 
from most part, it's been super smooth for us. Like you just don't have to worry about, you know, disconnecting and reconnecting like you do with discord. Mm hmm. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. So that ahead. was, that was really good for a little while. Um, and I mean, well, it was great, like uh, forever. And we didn't really have anything uh, planned to do with it other than just kind of being able to uh, stream music to each other and then like, you know, listen to each other's DAWs where we're playing audio so we don't have to bounce everything and send all these files back and forth just to hear like a tiny little thing that we made. Yeah. Um, so we had that going and it was perfect because I, I also needed a way to uh, send my audio to my students. And it's funny enough, I was doing it through Skype and I I had never really been on like Skype of all places, my God, because I didn't want to try and set everybody up with like Discord and stuff. It was like too much. So we're doing Skype and then I'm sending my uh, audio to them. And I, one day I had to like edit one of the videos that I was sending them and I ended up listening to it. And it's like, it's so like unprofessional to think that I didn't listen to any of the videos that I was recording for them before I sent them. I'm just like, oh yeah, they're probably fine. Just like, send it off. Yeah. And so I finally hear it and the audio is like just garbage, right? So I'm like, oh my God, is this what you're hearing? Like, I'm trying to give you like very specific advice on like EQing, like, kick drums and like stuff like that and they're like I guess I'll take your word for it because you know like it <laughs> just sounds like shit and I'm like okay and no, no one told me right I'm like definitely sending it like full quality like audio anyway so um Joel hit me up and he's like yeah I made a TeamSpeak server you can use this uh for your students so he like he saved my ass two ways there he's kind of just been a bro about that and then uh and then it was yeah like like I said or you said earlier it November ish you hit me up with this idea. And then this is where we got to the podcast start. Yeah. So I, I basically started and you just went back in time, kind of talked about kind of the history of us setting this kind of stuff up. And yeah, it's been a long process. Um, it's funny he talking about that, uh, talking about the student thing though, because I remember you were like, oh yeah, you're trying to explain stereo field. You're sending them a mono oh, signal. No. <laughs> it's like, you so you, you tell the difference, that. like just uh, he said, hear it stereo and then you hear it mono. It's like, they're like, I don't understand what he's saying, but I'm just going to agree. <laughs> Oh my god, especially if the sound was like phase canceling or something. I'm like, okay, now check it out in stereo and just disappears for them. I'm exactly, like, yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So that's uh oh. that was kind of the history. Obviously, any producer that does this kind of stuff where you're working with other people remotely, they totally understand this problem because there's only so many tools available and you know, latency is a thing. Um, sending high quality audio, like what you're hearing right now, this is actually directly recorded out of TeamSpeak. So that's why we've chosen that. I've tried out many different options and I found that this is the best. Um, mm. But I'm sure there are other options like Mumble's equivalent as well. But it's, yeah, I'm sure anybody that's tried this before is banging their head against the wall, same as we've been for, for a long time. So getting back it's, to, sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's a, it's a lot to handle, um, you know, just kind of like dealing with the whole thing in general. And I mean, you did all that research on your own time. I'm, I'm here. I'm just the guy who's like, I have a problem. And then like a yeah. week later, Joel's like, I have your solution and I paid for it. And here you go. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, getting back to like November, um, pretty quickly on, we realized that, you know, we wanted to do, uh, you know, we wanted to do video as well as audio so we had figured out audio at that point and it was working pretty well for us you know no real issues there but we wanted to kind of increase the quality there so we'd be getting kind of the video as well because i think most podcasts that you see and digest it is nice to have that video even if you're not going to use it having it yeah. as an option really does help um mm -hmm. and it, it makes it more accessible especially if we're going to be you know going to some production concepts that are difficult to explain um you know, well, that was the problem DAW, because right? because you uh, we, you initially pitched me the idea and I was like, yeah, OK, like the podcast is a great idea. And then you're like, it's going to be audio only. And I didn't even really think about it, but I'm like, yeah, audio only. And like um, and you, you even pitch you're like, it's not something that like really exists. So there's a pretty open market for it. You know, we can talk about some sort of like, you know, in-depth stuff. We don't have to try and be funny. We can just talk because like. We're, we literally have these conversations regularly and, and, you know, when you're hanging with your friends and, you know, everything's super funny, like, I wish this was a show. Like when we like just get on the phone randomly, we would go so deep into these topics and we're like, fuck, I wish I had that recorded. Like whether it's for myself or thinking that it's entertaining for somebody else. Yeah. And then, you know, so he hit me up with that idea and it was like, sweet. Okay. And then we recorded the first couple. I mean, yeah, I think two or at least or something with just uh, audio and uh, yeah. streaming just our 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 screens because that's easy. That's just OBS, right? It's not it's not hard for us to get our screen share going on. Yeah. And so 
the the end result was okay the main product is going to be an audio thing that will be on whatever um podcast um uh, platform and then we can upload the video on youtube don't not have to do any work because it's just an ableton screen and if it gets used it gets used you know thinking this is a good idea because we're really trying to minimize our effort the whole point is really just to capture our thoughts like and our our tangents and and the things that we talk about in like real time and so uh we did that and it kind of ended up just being like man i really wish that i could see your face like when we talk and like it's just so much more um uh what Re- relatable i guess when you see just the reactions right well that and uh it's funny because the first two conversations you were talking about where we didn't have we, we were just talking and there were, we couldn't see each other's faces so it's just your the only cues you have from a conversational standpoint are like if you try to like butt into you know mike's talking i'm trying to butt in i have to like but b- add little notes here or there to try to get you but there's yeah. also a delay which makes it really hard but having mm-hmm. uh what we did is we ended up just our phones are just we have a facebook video call going on with no audio but what that does is it gives us the facial cues and we can actually do hand gestures to each other which and it's not even perfectly in sync but what it does is it gives us that feedback which makes it that was a key moment when we were you know look going into actually recording this even if we were going to do no video i would still have video just to give us that cue from a conversational standpoint yeah, that was a smart idea on your part. I'm actually surprised we didn't think about it earlier because we did do those first couple just like completely like blind visually. Yeah. And uh yeah, it was it was kind of an issue stepping over each other, but uh but then we uh yeah, we've kind of mitigated that by by figuring out the video thing. But yeah. let's uh now that now that we know kind of like where it ended up and why we decided to do there, there's yeah. still one step in between, which is when we did the audio ones. So First of all, you got to think, I have two interfaces running, okay? <laughs> I have two interfaces running in order to loop back audio to send it to Joel and monitor it myself, right? Yeah. So I have to have two two mixes. Can I jump Joel, in here for a sec too? Yep. Because it's not yep. just our mic audio, it's also his DAW. So he needs to be able yes. to send, you know, everything that he's playing as well as My his output. Most, exactly. The output. And it's not just the output of like, you know, a little application. It's actually his DAW audio. So it has to be... Uh, coming out like via ASIO or which is why we do that loop back so, mm-hmm. and keep going. Yeah, no. So it's really hard to do with virtual audio routing, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so first of all, we've both got two interfaces running um, doing this loop back. We've got uh, TeamSpeak running. And then uh, did we just do it on Discord screen sh- share or did you do Parsec? Uh, so on the first couple of recordings, I think we used Parsec. So <laughs> We, let's, uh, so we we did a we, we're, we've only talked about audio at this point and monitoring because i want to be able yeah. to give mike a monitor of what's happening on my mm-hmm. end um so then the next problem is how do we give mike a monitor of what's happening video wise so how do you see what i'm basically recording at mine because i'm my computer that i'm sitting next to is basically doing the summation of everything it's recording everything and at first we were actually just recording the video separately and my plan was to video edit together um, that was never kind of the final goal because I really don't like video editing. And are we sorry before? Are you talking about um, editing just the screen and the audio? Yeah, I think it was the screen and the audio at this point. Yeah, because we're talking before before the cameras came. Before the cameras came, oh. yeah, it was just the screen and the audio. And I th- and I think the issue there is you have to sync it up. So basically, we were going to do like a sync process where we have to do a clap at the beginning, and then I have to go in with, you know, I have to take all the audio, process it in Ableton, make sure the vocal processing sounds good. And then I have to sync it up, export that from Ableton, which takes a long time for like an hour and a half podcast, uh, sync it all up in DaVinci Resolve, which I was using for editing, which I also don't really like because I don't know how to use it. Um, <laughs> it's not my domain. Um, and uh, yeah, basically it was just a real nightmare. Um, not, I wouldn't say it's a nightmare, but like back in November when I pitched this, Nicole, my sister had said, mm-hmm. hey, you guys have these conversations. I overhear them because she sits in the room right behind me. He's like, why don't you just record them? So that the, the original pitch really was just we shouldn't have to it shouldn't be like an it's extra less three hours a week. It should be less work. We should just basically record a conversation we are already going to have and it should basically be, you know, straightforward. We add an extra maybe 30 or 40 minutes per conversation and then yeah. you know, boom, we've have a fully created hour or an hour and a half long segment that we've done. Yeah, um, automatic content. Exactly. Yeah. So that that was kind of the goal. It was always it wasn't meant to be highly overproduced. I think that's always been for us. It's you know it, it really more about the conversation, and we're just trying to capture. That's not it. us. When yeah. has that ever been us? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So I think getting back to then the process of the of the, kind of this went on. We we had basically gotten to a point where I was editing it in video, 
um, like, you know, as we were recording the video separately from the audio and the video is getting streamed over using Parsec, I believe. And so if you haven't used that, it basically uses this Windows remote desktop. So it provides like a team viewer. Yeah, it's like team viewer, but it's it's pretty it's actually meant for video games. Uh, it's oh. basically it's actually for video game streaming. So I can use it. It's kind of like scene streaming or uh, Dude, I didn't know. Yeah, it what actually it's more similar to people might know is uh, Google Stadia. So it's similar to the it's similar tech that would be used in something like Google Stadia to stream it in really low latency. So generally you can get, you know, if you're on the same network, you can literally get 15 or 20 milliseconds of latency, which is really, really good. Um, so that's why we're using it to stream the video because then it's, you know, happening in real time and we don't have to worry about any kind of delay situation going on. Which yeah, is, it syncs to the audio. Exactly, yeah. Because if, if you're under, I would say, 100 milliseconds, you can just get away with having to deal with any syncing. It's just, you know, the human eye and ear can't really figure out any more than that. It's not the end of the world if it's a bit off. Not to mention, it's like the frame rate is not as fast as the audio rate. So it's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we had that. Um, and then to monitor, we, we were screen sharing, screen sharing my OBS session back to Mike via a, di- yes, a right, Discord right. session. Yes, right, right. Oh, my God. It's okay. Because yeah. I had to send my video to Joel, first of all, so that if I was doing something on Ableton, he could show my video on the, on the stream. Yeah. And so that's that's not a problem. But the, the Parsec connection only went like the one direction, like conveniently. I don't, does it do both ways? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, and, I, yeah, I don't know if it does, but like either way. So, but then I'm like, I have no idea what you're doing. So he would be talking about something and like doing it. And I'm like hearing it, but I'm like, I don't, I can't see what he's doing on Ableton. And like, you know, like if you're into producing, it's nice to see what's going on in the DAW. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Handy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So he, we got on Discord and he, and just did a screen share there. So when we open it up, we pretty much have to open, like we have to open Discord um, and then mute our microphones so that we're not sending audio on, on Discord. We have to open TeamSpeak, send our audio to and back to forth to each other. Yep. Only the DAW, because otherwise I will send his own microphone back to him. So we have to avoid like hardware loop feedbacks that can happen where I'm just like sending him my his own audio and him vice versa and we just like I don't know I don't know what happens it just explodes maybe so <laughs> we've been safe so far well anyways, we've had so that's we've had a couple we? loops though oh yeah well this is the other thing so then Parsec also sends audio and we didn't know that one time so one time we're trying to set this stupid thing up and like all of a sudden like Joel can hear himself repeating but I'm not and that didn't make any sense to me yeah, and I have just a, I have so much crazy audio routing rules going on in my setup right now that if if I hear that I'm like I just give up I'm like pan- I basically just panic I, I have no idea how to deal with it. Well, so, how many channels are on your mixing board? Uh, well, I so I used to use I have a mixing board to my left that you can't see or it's actually to my right because I have the audio video flipped. Um, but it's 32 channels. But I was do I used to do a dual PC setup where I was actually had a recording PC which is this one here. So this is a separate computer, um, and that has a an eight in eight out uh presonus fire studio and then my main pc which is down over here has another presonus fire studio and they're basically wired together using a snake and i was sending everything i needed from that one into this one and i was recording so it's because i wasn't mixing the audio down to a single set of stereo channels i was actually recording it separately into eight separate tracks so i was doing like basically multi-track recording so i could then process it and mix it later on the reason why i wanted to do that just so that the quality you know i could i could gain the volumes out afterwards what I realized is that's just so much effort that it's really not worth it to like mix all the audio separately in Ableton. It's just, it's honestly such a pain time time wise. It takes like 30 minutes. So yeah, it's a whole nother thing is you don't want to mix fucking eight channels down for no reason when you don't have to. Exactly. Yeah. So that was, that was the original process. It was not particularly good. Um, the, the benefit of it is we didn't have to really do any syncing at the time of uh, recording. So like you basically, you know, you just do a clap at the beginning, make sure you're recording everything. And then all the syncing, all that stuff happens after the fact, which, you know, that seems pretty straightforward, but essentially there's a lot of work afterwards that we kind of wanted to mitigate. So do you want to start moving into the, into the, the next step here where the, yeah. the, the, the following solution that we came up with? <laughs> okay. So, um, I think there might've been one actually before this, but first of all, we got the cameras involved. Right. So now uh, Joel is fine because he's doing all the master recording on his end. So it's very easy for him to have OBS running with his camera. And obviously his camera is going to be in sync with his own DAW and his own audio is going to be in sync with yep. his own audio. Right. So I have to send him my, uh, you know, my screen thing. But 
if we did, we must have done it on on Discord. I can't no, I can't remember because this is the thing. If I want to put my camera on his screen the way that you're seeing it right now, okay, then yeah. <laughs> we need. I need to. He needs to somehow get a, yeah. a a full thing of my Ableton, but like I can't. I can't have my own camera on the screen that I'm <laughs> seeing, right? I, I don't want my webcam in front of my own Ableton like while I'm doing it. So I I can't just send him the one screen with the camera there. I had to send him my OBS feed, like what I see when I have OBS <laughs> running, which has my my what you see on my stream, which is my DAW and my camera, right? So I'm sending him that, but that program doesn't go full screen. So yeah. Did you crop it? So, so they, we only did this for one episode, and <laughs> I'm never doing it again. Basically, 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 I was running. Uh, also, another problem is you can only send a video webcam feed to one screen at a time. So I can't, I can't have my webcam showing an OBS plus also on Discord. Right. So I, I just had, his. yeah, I had just your webcam, and I had basically OBS on my second monitor in the middle and then i was recording my second monitor and cropping that little segment of OB, uh, of discord the problem with that is if i don't perfectly line up discord oh, the next discord. time if i don't perfectly line up the application in the crop rule that i'd created in obs it would just be wrong or if i accidentally moved <laughs> another screen a window in front of obs it, oh, would, it, or it would well it's just my other window would override what was being <laughs> but it's shown. just the corner of it like just yeah. one little piece of it right so you just see some text where my face is supposed to be exactly so yeah that's what that's what i couldn't remember is that because remember now joel has my screen through parsec so on discord when we're doing the screen share it's only so i can see his screen so that's how we came up with that idea is yeah. i would send him my video on on uh, Discord, and he sends me his screen, and then that way he can crop from Discord. Yeah. Right. And, and so I wasn't even um, doing anything OBS at this time. I wasn't using OBS on my computer nope. at this point because I were didn't just need to. using Parsec. That was the yeah. that was the next step. Yeah. So something I have known about for a while is something called RTMP. Uh, it's called real... no. Before that. Before What's that. Before that. We we the one that started but never happened. The the VLC thing, and then oh, also okay. the. <laughs> Okay, this is a whole nother uh, can of worms. Um, <laughs> I actually forgot about this. I think that's just my memory hiding it because it was so... Disappeared it. Yeah, so... It was such a... What, what that was is uh, you can actually send streams via... Or you can basically stream something from VLC. So you can essentially record your webcam and then just stream it. And from... A, I, run, I work in IT, so I'll try to make this really... Uh, I'll try to kind of dumb down the networking so it's not super complicated. But essentially what's happening is he's running an application on his desktop and streaming it. And then he has to create all these little rules to allow it to be available to the internet. Um, mm -hmm. And we were trying to do that, but that means he has to change a bunch of details with his router. And his router actually, he has a router and then his, it's plugged into his parents' router. So there's kind of two levels of routing that happen. So we had to go configure it twice. And he only knew how to do the, the first one. Well, it wasn't that we didn't know. It's just a lot of time. And we had to basically jump on and we were like remoting the router. We had to restart your router because we didn't or reset it because you didn't know the password for it. Uh, and a bunch yeah, of, oh my God. And a bunch of other things. And we basically gave up on that because it required a bunch of networking and configuration on Mike's end, which is just going to be kind of a pain, especially if there were any problems down the line. It's better to have that on my end because I just I can just do that. That's like my job, basically. It's to you know mess with networking and whatnot. Um, and so, I mean, that got vetoed pretty quickly. I think we spent maybe an hour trying to do it and then just gave up. Well, we set it all up on my router and then he's like, why isn't it working? I'm like, well, my router's plugged into another router. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, then uh, that, I, I went to go do it. We were going to go and change that one as well, which would have been a nightmare. But um, <laughs> either way, I was like, okay, I'm ready to do it. And he's like, fuck that. We have a way better plan. Yeah. And I was like, all right, let's hear it. And then this is when we got to now. Exactly. Yeah. So I totally forgotten about that. And essentially, I also had this in the back of my head. I just, this was hopefully going to be my last resort because I knew it essentially involved having a server running at my house. But everybody I'd, everybody I'd seen online, basically what it's called is an RTMP server, real time media protocol. Essentially, what it does is it allows him to stream to me. So he, it's almost like he's streaming instead to me, of going to Twitch. In, instead of going to Twitch, so he just adds my server, and this is essentially what Twitch has on their end. So they just have these RTMP servers, which you then stream to, and then people can then connect to those RTMP servers to watch it. So essentially, it's like a little buffer. You know, the video comes in, it sits in the buffer, and then a bunch of people can watch it um, from that buffer. So what we did is I just set up a a RTMP server local on my network. Um, it's using something called Nginx, which is a reverse. Well, it's not a reverse proxy, but it's like a web web application proxy. 
um, set it up on that. Luckily, I actually have a lot of background in our Nginx, so it only took me about 25 minutes. Um, <laughs> and uh, once that was set up, we configured Mike to, to connect his OBS and everything. And now instead of using, you know, some weird plugins, this and that, he's actually just directly streaming from OBS. So he just sets up what he wants to stream to me in so, OBS. Yeah. So now this is um, the funny part is he's explaining to me, he's explaining this idea to me um, through like text and stuff. And I'm like, okay, so if it works like Twitch, doesn't that mean that just like on Twitch, when I stream, it shows up on the stream like a yeah. little while behind? And he's like, yeah, there'll be a bit of delay. I'm like, okay, well, then my audio is not going to be synced with my video. And so we're like, ah, well, how the fuck are we going to do that? Because we can't speed up my video, yeah. right? So... We instead of it's like kind of like you're only as fast as your weakest link. Well, my stream to him is the weakest link in our connection. Everything else is pretty much direct. The audio is fast enough that we can have a normal conversation. There isn't any weird delays, but my video is now out of time. So the only way around that was to delay everything else. Exactly. Yeah. So it's almost like if you think, you know, it's we have to wait for everything is going to get recorded at, you know, at a certain time. There's a time where it's like taking a snapshot of all the audio, all the video. But the thing is, we can only take that snapshot once we've received everything. So with with RTMP, which is, you know, this our requirement now is to have the video stream, I need to have his webcam and potentially also his desktop. To have all that, um, we were testing RTMP and we were finding that the latency was like between two, three seconds to like five or six seconds. And at first I was like, what's going on? Keyword, keyword is between. Yeah, it's not consistent. So that was where I was like getting really concerned. I was like, okay, well, if it's not consistent, how are we going to deal with it? How do we sync up the vi uh, the audio, which is actually coming in and early, early, my exactly. Video. And as well as my video as well, because it's all being mixed down again and recorded on, on my end. And we're, we basically switched from recording it all separately, at, you know, recording in Ableton, multi-track, recording, and then recording just the video in OBS. We're doing it all now in one go. So I'm feeding the audio directly into OBS and it's stitching together the audio and the video. So if we have any problems there and things are out of sync, there's no real option to sync it up together unless just the audio. There's one option, yeah, but it's not great. And essentially we basically have to throw out the episode if that happens. Yeah, or yeah. we have to go into Premiere and then mask it, double layer the entire video, and then offset my camera so that it matches the rest of it, which will be in time with itself, hopefully. Yeah. So that, <laughs> but then we're by, back down to doing like Premiere stuff, and it's like, yeah, that wouldn't take too long, and it's like could be worth saving an episode if it absolutely happened. But we we're really trying to mitigate this. We want to record this all on one master channel. But the thing is, we've got three like four, sorry, four um, members to this band, you know, two videos and two audio sources. And they're all on like telephones on different sides of the country. And they're trying to jam together. It's like, good luck yeah. counting it in. You know what I mean? So and everyone has a different delay. So like a different amount of latency between each call. Everyone's not actually like perfectly, you know, so it's like, it's, you can't, it's, it's the ultimate task of beat matching you know what i mean this is the biggest test of our our beat matching abilities in, in anything honestly. yeah it was it was a real pain and i also didn't understand it that thoroughly because there's not a lot of good documentation online when i was looking into like okay well, how do you compensate for rtmp stream latency but generally speaking nobody's doing that they're not actually using rtmp and then recording it after the fact people are using it to like watch webcams or sorry watch security cameras watch from web. somewhere else yeah and like oh, yeah, yeah, okay. it's it's not it's not like in the between of the, it's not used in the middle of a production step when you need to sync it, unless you're using something in you know, more professional setup. So um, we had to figure that out. And I did a bunch of testing where I would connect into a machine and I would actually video to it directly. So there would be no delay, like a, a no delay recording, or in my case, it was just using this laptop streaming it to my other computer. And then I would have also the RTMP stream open. And what I do is I'd start a timer. And then as soon as I saw it go on RTMP, I'd click it again just to kind of, and that would give me an idea of what the delay was between the time. And what we found out is it's very much like a stream. Like when you start watching a Twitch stream, you know, there's like three or four seconds while it loads into it. So that's that yeah. same process. It's the amount of time it takes you to start that buffer and it, that mm -hmm. will stay consistent once you're connected. So that time doesn't change once the RTMP stream has actually been established. Mm -hmm. Although every time you connect, it will be slightly different. 
Yeah, which matters because audio can only be off to a certain extent before it becomes noticeable and kind of unpleasant. Like, there's nothing. There's I actually, honestly, I, it seems like it's something we could be like, oh, it doesn't really matter. But like, who here has ever watched a movie that's been out of sync with the audio and been like, this is fine? Yeah, yeah, and like, it's no. And, <laughs> and it's also not just that it would be out of sync. It's so it's not even that it would be out of sync with the audio because we could just shift it, right? That's a simple problem. You just shift the audio by a couple of milliseconds. The problem is, yeah, if we get this wrong, thing. my audio, you know, my audio is going to be perfectly lined up, but Mike's won't be. Yeah, so and it's, you can't <laughs> fix it because they're one audio channel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The only the way to fix it would actually be to like export your video, mm -hmm. and then delay that actually after the fact because it's really just your video that we have to fix it so it's technically fixable but it's a real well, the real weird pain. the really the really weird part about it is because like imagine this if you recorded your audio on one channel in ableton and i recorded and you and mine on a separate uh, channel on ableton then if we ran into that problem in theory you know uh like you know if mine was early and joel's was synced you know yeah. then we couldn't move it this way but if they're separate then we can re you know we can adjust mine to be that way but the problem is that then the conversation won't be happening at the same rhythm. So we could end up literally talking over each other that didn't actually happen, you know, yeah. in, in the real recording. So not only that, but then on top of that, my, my DAW and my voice are one audio channel for Joel, but my DAW is getting sent through Parsec, which is like instant where my camera is late. So my, my, I have two video streams going to Joel and they're not the same time. So yeah. he has to have a way, like no matter what happens, like he has to get those in time so that my audio even works at all. And then on top of that, he has to then sync his audio with mine um, afterwards. And so how did you, what was your method? <laughs> uh, so basically we figured out a way to time it. And that was when we start the call, we essentially, you know, we initiate the session and that's going to be some set delay between probably around three to eight seconds. And then I have a bunch of delays in everything. So I can delay the audio. I can delay the video of mine, all the screen audio, all that stuff. Uh, so I can delay everything that's being recorded in real time so that it matches up with the delay that's now been caused by the start of this RTMP stream. Once we do that, once we calculate the time, <clears throat> Sorry, we do we're using a timer on Google. Yeah, where I where on he takes control of my mouse on Parsec, clicks start on a stopwatch on my computer, and because he has to click it because he has to know when it started and then like when to try and stop it, and so uh, he'll click it on my computer and then watch my stream video, and as soon as it shows up, he has to click stop again on my computer and then look back to get the the, the timing time, difference. Exactly, yeah. And then once we know that number, then he has to adjust all the filters. Yeah, exactly. And the problem with this though is so I adjust all the filters, which are there in, in OBS. Unfortunately, there's not a single filter. I won't go too in depth because it's kind of just uh, more technical stuff that's boring, but essentially it's a huge pain. Um, and it takes me, you know, 30 seconds to input all the delays. Once yeah. that's done, we essentially now have a live stream. So another part of kind of our requirements is we didn't just want to be able to record it. We actually would like to have the ability to stream this live. And that is not possible unless you do this setup because we need to be able to record it and have everything delayed and then resynced after the fact. Um, and, and then that way the output actually comes out. You know, we could, we could literally stream what we have right now directly to Twitch or, or whatever site we want to. And we could have a live version of this, which is really important because it, you know, it makes the production of this very easy. So after we're done this, I really don't have to do anything unless we screwed up. Um, and everything's just going to come out no problem, which is really That's the plan. The plan, exactly. Yeah. And so to, I'm I also, <laughs> just, I, during this conversation, I've already thought of another solution that may make things a bit easier. It involves oh. using a second computer with a second webcam and sending me a separate parsec screen of just the webcam. Yo, that's smart. That's so yeah. easy. I already have this computer re running the audio. I could just put my webcam on that maybe. yeah except for i now need to have a second monitor that's just for your webcam so it should be okay, let's deal with that later yeah we'll <laughs> deal with that later that might actually help us with the delays it, the thing is i actually just don't adding more control yeah it's about we're trying to figure out the easiest way and i also want it to be simple to set up so that we can set it up in a reasonable amount of time and looping back to the beginning we were meant to start at five o'clock today mm -hmm. pst so my time in vancouver and we were about two and a half hours late yeah, and you can usually expect at least 30 minutes of setup time in any sort of situation like this. Like with my students, I have this problem all the time, you know, like yeah. it's a lesson is scheduled for this amount of time, but it doesn't matter who it is, you know, it doesn't matter how many times we've used our equipment. Like I, you know, I've used this gear forever. I've been doing audio for so long and, and like then it's still, I still 
fuck it up somehow it just ends up you know not working so you have 30 minutes of delay just setting things up but this one was like two and a half hours yeah and so the the majority of that was actually caused by this setup process which sorry mm. the, the 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 sinking and getting yeah. the delays probably that really was what caused the majority of the pain oh yeah because it resets every time he changes something on obs it like sometimes it will re refresh my feed which gives it which instantly sets changes it the delay time. time exactly so yeah. if we don't do things in the exact right order and you click the wrong button at the wrong time you have to start from the very beginning yeah exactly yeah so that's but honestly even if it even if we end up doing something else i'm pretty happy that i learned how to i've learned a lot about how obs works mm -hmm. and kind of how to deal with the problems and a bunch of other things um because i I've kind of had this long-term goal of, you know, creating content in some way here or there, but at the same time, I really don't want to have that lag time of, you know, okay, I'm going to spend, you know, three, four hours recording my Ableton session and then, you know, collecting all those clips, storing them somewhere, you know, loading them into the thing and then editing it and then having that editing process. And I, I'm not trying to uh, say that, you know, editing is a bad thing. It's totally necessary for highly produced content, but my main job is to produce audio. And mm. for me to basically be a good video editor would be be really detrimental i don't have enough time like i basically yeah, no, it's ridiculous it's just you know i'd have to either hire a video producer and i you know i'm not i don't have the money i'm not making any money doing what i'm doing right now so it just doesn't yeah. really make sense and that's why i really for fun was moving to more towards the, the live production and i don't mind that because you know you have to learn a bit about it you know there's a lot of audio management making sure the gains done properly mm -hmm. i'm looking at you uh beat port streams that were improperly uh the gain staging was really bad. Some of them were like literally like 30 dB gain too loud. It was hilarious. Wait, you're looking at it right now? No, no, this was last night. So there was like that oh. people stream and the, it wasn't like oh. a lot of people were just streaming from their homes. So it was everybody's, oh, yeah. it wasn't like some centralized audio setup and a lot of them, I, I thought it was like some really new techno song, but it was just like 30 dB too loud into the preamps of their uh, audio <laughs> interface. Oh dear God, that's yeah. so funny, man. Shout yeah, so that's IO. the thing is, is like it takes a lot to to do this this stuff because not only does it have to be, you know, somewhat low effort for us to do, you know, at least manageable. But like at the end of the day, like when we're setting all this stuff up, we're basically trying to, it's like it's like trying to the it's like trying to do everything on your own versus having a team of people to do it with you. You know, things are going to yeah. get be done better as a big team, except our team members. Our, uh, our our gear and our software right yeah. so that's why we have many many softwares lots of hardware and it's not because like like we kind of need it all but at the end of the day they're all helping each other not have to work as hard and that's the same thing that's like that's why i use this computer now because before i was just sending in my audio out of one interface into the other you know it's fine yeah. i can do that but it's just well you're at the mercy of like the microphone i didn't have a, the ability to process it but now i can you know run it through here and i've got another ableton running on my computer that i can compress and do the whatever i need to do to make my microphone sound good make sure that my audio is limited make sure the gain staging is proper so that what i'm sending joel is already processed properly and it doesn't not not only does it not put the load on his PC, but then again, he doesn't have to do all of the mix down later for something that should already just sound good. It's simple. You know what I mean? It's yeah. simple, but it's hard to get the simple to happen. Quickly. Yeah. And I think our, you know, our plan was this is to put it in perspective, this is our episode eight, I believe. Um, and I think probably three or four of those original ones that, you know, we hadn't really figured out the formula. And I think we mm -hmm. came into this knowing that this was going to be the case. Like we're probably yeah. not going to air a fair number of these because, you know, a, there's a technical side of it where we're trying to just figure out what it is. The actual thing needs to be. Okay. And then once you've found those criteria, what is it that you actually, how are you going to do it? You know, what is the technology you're going to use for that? And then the final one as well is actually just kind of our style of how we present. So, you know, we yeah. tried a bunch of different things. We tried kind of a more, I wouldn't say that it's produced, but like we actually kind of had not a full script, but kind of, you know, some more bullet points that we were going to do because, you know, at first I was, I'd never done this before and I was afraid that I wouldn't actually have, you know, enough to talk about for, you know, an hour and a half or an hour and 50 minutes. I was afraid that we would kind of run out, which is kind of dumb yeah. in hindsight. It's hilarious <laughs> because the whole thing is that you and I do this by accident. We talked yeah. for like four hours, right? So it's yeah. like, just one of those things where we were really overthinking it just to try and like make sure that like it was something interesting when in reality it's actually just more interesting to just kind of chill well and we've been playing these out to we've been sharing these with a lot of people and the feedback we've gotten so far is the ones that are more kind of off the cuff which is what we're doing now essentially we, we've come up with a single question or a single thing to talk about that will invoke a starting question and then we just take as many tangents as we need to keep it going 
And I think we normally have a backup question, but other than that, it's pretty much. I think we ever even needed it, really. I feel no. like it's every, t- every time that we've been like, we want to hit all these points, it's like we're almost trying too hard to rush the other person and then, yep. you know, trying to get these questions out unnaturally. And it's like, that's kind of not even the point. Like, exactly. I'd rather talk yeah. about it in depth. Yep. And that's really it, having it just being kind of free flowing is, is the best. And that's actually why we chose to talk about the setup tonight. I mean, we had actually, luckily, we'd planned to talk about this from the previous episode as well. Yeah. But because we of the amount of forgot about it yeah yeah because the amount, the amount of issues that we had came up with um it you know this is a pretty like it's super fresh in our minds we just spent two and a half hours troubleshooting and i if there had been one more issue tonight uh, we we were literally at the verge of breaking like let's yeah. okay let's now that we're here we're up to like present so we can exactly, talk about yeah. the whole night so it started off with um what was it? it was your um your video and audio was not synced for some reason yeah so the delays were not being so i you know i add these delays in to sync everything up to the slower version the delayed mic uh, source and, but i mm-hmm. had those in but they were not working like so like it was you know it everything was programmed in the application but there was some bug that was causing it to not work so mine was synced for some reason which makes no sense because that should be the most difficult one because that's yeah. the one where we have to guess with the stopwatch where the, the audio should be yeah so my video is syncing but for some reason joel's wasn't yeah exactly so and i was like well i don't know what's going on and it, at some point i thought that maybe there was another one of those parsec audio loops happening and maybe it was muted somewhere because i also did redo the entire audio routing and that's another thing we didn't really talk about, but essentially, instead of an analog audio routing, I'm using something called the virtual audio router, I believe, or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Synchronized it's audio router, board. and it basically allows me to use Ableton. It, I won't get into it, but Google it if you want it. Synchronized audio router. It's actually really great. But um, I was doing everything in Ableton, and uh, essentially, you know, the delays were not working, and our only real option there is to restart OBS, which if we do ruins the delay timings that we just implemented restart all the whole thing again <laughs> exactly so we i restarted obs and this is like probably 25 minutes in now we you know you try to troubleshoot everything else ahead of time before you do mm-hmm. the, the, the the final the thing, thing that there. guarantees you have to restart yeah so we did that and that fixed it so that was just an obs bug which is okay whatever it's really annoying um yeah. but it is what it is and then i think what happened next was um was it the network dropout or I can't. Well, that's what I was wondering if there was something in between that. Like, I think, did you have the, I think you had a, one of those stutter glitch things happen on one of your recordings at least once here, because when it happened the next time we were like, why is it doing that again? I think, yeah. So what, I think what it was that happened next. So after we got it, you know, we, we restarted OBS and then we reestablished the RTMP link, did a test for the delay, did it all, recorded it. And once we recorded, after we'd done all of that, there's a bug that also happens with something to do with the audio recording path where I just get like these bits, like it's, you get it just little bits like of shit. the audio, but it's basically, yeah, it's like there's a crazy gate and it's only letting through the very loudest bit of the yeah. volume. So that was happening, which was like, okay, well, what do you do then? Restart OBS. And I knew that one because that had happened before, but yeah, it was just was really bad luck that it happened again. So restarted OBS at that point, which is like- Got okay. it all set up. Dude, we, we, and this is the worst part. We got it all set up. We did the test and we've done it multiple times in a row now. Yeah. So we were getting good. Cause like, I have to like, you know, show him my screen on my stream, then open up a Chrome tab. And then he has to grab my mouse, which is actually kind of annoying in itself because sometimes he accidentally yeah. grabs my mouse while I'm trying to do things. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's just stupid little things. So I have to do that, do the stopwatch thing. We already explained that. And then, yeah. uh, and then finally we got it all synced. The, uh, the video worked. And yeah. then all of a sudden, his like, cause I'm, I'm, you see, I'm watching his face in real time using my phone. All of a sudden, the Facebook call goes. I'm like, what the, like, what? We were literally like, time to start recording. And yeah. like, as soon as he pressed the button, it was just like, Facebook call goes. And I was like, oh, what the hell? I'm like, can you still hear me? And he's like, yeah. And it comes through like all distorted through Teamspeak. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you lost connection. You lost connection. Like TeamSpeak disappears. OBS goes down. Discord goes down. I look at my, like, even my Facebook chat was just like chat unavailable. And then my internet's just like, like, like it says it's there, but it's not working. And then it reconnected for a second. And I'm, I'm literally about to say like, this doesn't make sense because like I can see my like my stuff moving. I think your internet, like thinking that, you know, he's running a server, he's running this, this and that. I'm like, it's got to be yours. I'm like, I think your internet might be down and like halfway through that sentence, it's just like, and like everything, like, you know, at all of my stuff stops working. <laughs> my, my phone stops working. I'm like, did they like unplug the other router over there? Like what's going on? Like, I don't know. And so I go inside and like checking around, come back, 
no internet. I have to like, I actually had to text Joel like with like real phones, you know, like phone text to be like, yo, hold on a minute. I got to try and figure it out. Cause like even my, my, my messenger wasn't working on my phone. Yeah. So then I had to restart my computer. I had to restart my router and then I'm waiting and I'm like, it now it's like red X. I'm like, what's no, it was a yellow one. Right. So that's what's the, even more confusing. If it's a red X that down there, you're like, Hey, something's just not plugged in. Like that's, you know, that's total fail. But if it's a yellow one, you're like, well, everything's plugged in. Like, why isn't it working? Yeah. So anyway, I like reached down and like, sure enough, like some of my ethernet cords were like slightly unplugged, which probably happened when I pulled the, you know, unplugged the router. I, I don't know. Anyway, long story short, that takes another little while. I mean, you can imagine. And so I get it up and running and we're like, okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. Set it up. Well, I'll go through that whole process again, set up the delays. And then we go to record it. And then this happens. Yeah. So we get all the networking sorted out and then restart everything, get it synced up. And I start noticing that my OB, like my whole computer is starting to like the mouse is delaying. So like that generally like, oh no, the CPU is overloaded. Like if you ever have a crappy computer, you know, the mouse is kind of glitching out. I'm like, what would be causing this? Like what, why in the world is my mouse like glitching out? And when we did the recording, we also noticed that it was running at like half the frame rate. So it's basically wasn't on, mm -hmm. it didn't have enough system resources to do it. And I'm like, why in the world is that happening? Cause I open up t task manager and you know, I have a, decent computer and it's got a lot of cores and they're all running at like 13 or 14 percent which is like okay that shouldn't be causing this kind of a problem and then i go into the gpu tab which is that's actually what could be doing some of the rendering and it's maxed out at 99 and i'm like okay well what why in the world i'm recording why? a very low bitrate video stream 1080p and it's 30 frames per second i did a stream the night before no problems same webcam and everything yeah, and and, um, yeah. Not to mention, it's the most indescriptive name on Task Manager. It just yeah. says system. Yeah, yeah. It was the system. So it wasn't even OBS. OBS was showing like 15% GPU usage. Uh, another one, it wasn't doing that much. And it turns out, so we were doing a bunch of digging, trying to figure it out. Shutting <laughs> off every program one by one. Discord, OBS yeah. the last because we're like, we don't <laughs> want to redo that. So we're hoping it's every other program and one of them will fix it. And sure enough. And if we re if we restart OBS... We have to do the whole thing. Um, we again. have to do the resync. And so, spoiler alert, we didn't have to. I figured out a way. You're actually, this is the same synchronization, which I'm very happy that we're getting close to the end of the story here. Yeah. Um, basically, um, turns out I have a, a Logitech burrito, which is, you know, a pretty. It's Say like, a Logitech it do, burrito? Yeah, a burrito. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a delicious. Oh, brio. Brio. Okay. It's brio. It's like it can do 4K or 1080 60, which I like to have 60, especially if you're doing like movements, if you're mixing or whatnot. It, it's nice to have. Um, and turns out if you have it, if you set the settings custom in OBS, it does this weird thing where instead of the processing happening on the camera itself, because if you, if you know anything about webcams, there is a process called encoding, which basically is when an analog signal turns into digital. And I believe what happens is a lot of that, if you're in the standard settings and the standard options, that encoding happens at the webcam process. And essentially OBS just gets an, uh, a, a digital stream that's doesn't really take any overhead to, to deal with. And it, that's how it should be. You know, when you plug a webcam in, it shouldn't be hogging all your system resources to do all the processing on the computer. It should happen at the webcam. <clears throat> so what it turns out is I needed to download this Logi webcam application. Let's see what it's called. Logi Capture. And so I think what's actually happened is they've updated the software. And as a result, they're trying to get people to use it. So I fire up the Logi Capture device, which is, you know, it's now another program before OBS. So my webcam goes into Logi Capture first, but I can then use the default settings. And what that does is it offloads the processing back to the webcam because I'm using the default settings. And then I'm recording Logi Capture in OBS. And once that's all done, then my system process was back down to a normal amount. You know, it was about it, it, recording the same quality. It was still 1080p, still 30 frames per second, nothing crazy. It, but but it wasn't offloading it to my system encoder, which is, I think that's what the issue was. I, I obviously don't really want to go too deep into it because it's done and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. But uh, something happened. Something happened, but using the webcam. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a Log Logitech Brio, use the Logi Capture application because. Yeah. And, and then stream that into OBS and you'll be much happier for it. You won't deal with these kind of issues. So, yeah. 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 And then we started streaming and it's been working ever since, hopefully. Oh, there was also a watermark on the program that he had to find out how to remove. <laughs> Just a little cherry on top. Yeah. I was, yeah. You spend $150 on a webcam and the application. comes with a watermark. <laughs> a watermark that says Logi. Just in case people are like, oh, which webcam do you have? It's, it's the Logitech, Logitech one. It's yeah. like, are, do anybody buy any other types of webcams? They're only Logitech. <laughs> yeah 
anyways i was oh uh, uh, god god wow by that amazing what a rabbit hole man it's so trippy yeah. to think that this podcast ended up being a story about trying to tell the story that we're telling i know yeah it's it's honestly insane but it makes sense because uh, I mean, I was, we, I was so close to being at the end of my rope there. You, I don't normally get mad. I wasn't getting that mad, but it was starting to boil up a little bit inside. I was, do I was, any of you watch, um, um, Brooklyn nine, nine, like you've seen it. Yeah. I was watching it today. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. So like Joel's level of like emotional, like, uh, um, um, visualness is about the same as captain Holt, right so like when he's infuriated he's like well i was infuriated you know so he's got like dad mode like like hella right you know so it, and i can tell you straight up like he was infuriated yeah well i i basically said i mean we both agreed i'm like I, if this has if there are any more problems I'm quitting. Like yeah. we're, I'm uninstalling OBS and that's yeah, the we end. We even pushed that. Yeah. We even pushed that because there was a couple times where like, if one more thing happens and then the thing happened and we're like, oh, no. and we just kind of kept going, you know, yeah. but, but really this was the last straw, you know, it's like, oh, I swear, you know, and yeah. then that was, that was where it was, but we did it, dude, we did it. And it's working. And I think our goal for next one will be just to kind of, I want to time how long it takes. Cause obviously if all this is you know, crazy and it's taking up all this time, you know, what's the point? Why don't we just go back to video editing? That's a more, uh, less risky way of doing it. You know, it's not in a single take. So I think the next time we do this, we're going to try to be really try to get it under that 15, 20 minute time for setup. Um, I think yeah. we pretty much dealt with every issue you can possibly imagine. And that's where I think that yeah. if the, if the captain Holt and me can, uh, come out again, it's probably that, um, you know, you get mad and all that stuff, but when you're in these situations, you really have to troubleshoot and you learn. And this is where, you know, pushing yourself to do these kind of setups, even though, you know, we might've tried all these things and just not even done them. And, you know, we, we set up did this whole setup. We might even get rid of the RTMP server and not even use the delays. Yeah. Um, but learning how we could have given up anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. And, but the process of going through and actually kind of, you know, learning how that all works and actually giving it a try is not such a bad thing, especially if you're only spending, you know, four or five hours trying it out. It's like, you know, spending some time in a... We're learning. It's yeah. literally, literally learning. It's yeah. totally fine. Like, there's no su such thing as bad when anything goes wrong here because anytime yeah. something goes wrong, we're learning, like, how something doesn't work, you know? And, like, exactly, yeah. there's only a couple ways that it can work, so it's just a matter of trial and error until we figure out the most stable thing. And it's like, we really do have to experiment with it until we figure out what's going to work. Like, there is... There's no, uh, there's no uh, guidelines to follow. There's no strategies already like laid out for us doing this sort of thing. You know, like we have to make it up as we go, just like doing a live set. And on top of yeah. that, we also have to be good at troubleshooting. And that comes with kind of both of our jobs. You know, as a musician, we always do it on the all, like all the time. Like if you're playing, you're just, you know, you're always listening to make sure you can troubleshoot in time. If you're a DJ, shit goes wrong. You have to like troubleshoot while the show's going on, you yeah. know, and even from your, uh, you know, your line of work, like in IT, if something goes wrong, like, you got to figure it out now. Like there's no yeah. like waiting, right? So you got to troubleshoot quick. And uh, that's like something that's like, it's a kind of like, um, rewarding frustration because even though it's uh it's really infuriating at the time it's something that we are confident enough in that we can figure it out and it's essentially like a puzzle for us exactly and that's i think you know that's part of the reason why we haven't given up to this point i mean i it's seldom that i say that i'm gonna give up on trying things that being said there are other things that i've beaten my head against the wall for an extended <laughs> amount of time and have almost given up on but really what it boils down to is do you believe that you'll be able to to figure it out because that's the question that happens. You know, a lot of people will be, they'll see a wall and they say, okay, this is impossible. You know, when I look at a wall, I'm not saying that I'm really any different than people, but I will be more willing to look for that little hold and okay, I got that one. Okay. I moved a little bit up. Okay. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And breaking down that, you know, that huge wall that's seems insurmountable when you look at it, but when you get up close and you analyze it, you find, you know, okay, these, these are some ways I can, I can, you know, approach it from this angle and then figure that whole area. Okay. Once I have that, I can use that to then look at this other point and you, you're slowly kind of building on your knowledge and you're able to overcome something that maybe you can't be taught by somebody else. You have to teach yourself and you have to figure yeah. it out all by yourself. So I think it's, you know, it, this is something I try to do with everything, especially with music production as well, but, um, definitely a value, I think to, although it doesn't Perseverance. feel, yeah, although it doesn't feel like it right now, I'm still pretty angry. <laughs> It was infuriating, but man, like, honestly, like, like you look at it now and it was a hundred percent worth the effort. And like, yeah. you know, obviously we would never have given up. Like there was a chance that we were going to give up on trying to record this tonight yeah. because we had spent so much time. But at the end of the day, we wanted to do this. And like, if we didn't record it, like, it's not like, 
oh it didn't work okay peace out bro good night like we would have just hung out anyway like we would have yeah. just been talking about stuff so like why not do the thing that we do naturally which is like figure stuff out instead of it being you know audio production which is a little bit more fun we were doing this instead it's just a different kind of puzzle and like you know at the end of the day it is for the benefit of us being able to like make this content and and have something that's you know, fun for us, fun for you. And like, at the, yeah, that's really the, the main goal here is just to make sure that it's something that's fun. You know, we don't want it to be stressful. Yeah. And all those other, all those other uh, uh, ideas of configurations we tried came with a, a certain amount of stress to it that uh, it's worth it for us to try and figure out how to, how to win the long game. Yeah, and not going to lie, I'll probably always be trying to optimize this. It's if It wouldn't be mm -hmm. something that I'm working on if I wasn't always tweaking it here and there. I'm just going to try to keep that in my time so I'm not... It's not yeah. 25, 30 minutes of uh, troubleshooting. Well, that's this and the that, funniest so. shit is like, honestly, because like the first time when we had the problem where like we were trying to do the the weird stream routing with like the, the routers and stuff like that, like the, those literally the servers. Yeah. Um, or not even the no, modems. No, this, this is the modems is what I should use. For um, people that are technical, at that point, sorry, it's configuring firewalls on his end. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like even during that time, you know, like, I, I'm thinking like, okay, we're going to do this. And like, you know, in the, in the time it took for me to like go from like setting up one thing to trying to do the next step, Joel had already done like a day's worth of research and found a whole other option. And then when we ran into the, the inconsistent server time thing, same thing. I were like going to bed that night. He's like, oh, I'm going to have to do some research on this. I'm thinking this is going to take you fucking hours, man. Like there's no way. And he literally hit me up at like three or four hours later, you know, it's like the middle of the night for me, you yeah. know, and, and it's like, yo, I, I solved it. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> like, awesome, man. That's fucking tight. To, to be fair, uh, I did, I had done a lot of prep work ahead of time. I, I, you know, most of the time when I was setting up your firewalls and whatnot, I had I, option B was always in my mind and I'd done a fair bit of research into RTMP ahead of time. So it was, it was more or less, you know, I'd done a lot of the research already. It was just a matter of kind of saying, okay, now I need to just do it for sure. Uh, I need to actually kind of implement everything here. So, yeah. Yeah, well, we did it. And this is kind of funny because it's like, yeah, you're talking about how um, you're always looking for ways to optimize. And like, I'm the same way, you know, you've, if anyone's watched my streams or like heard me talk about things, like I'm always sort of like organizing stuff. And it's like, I don't know why I like it. Spend so much time organizing things, trying to optimize things. But it's to the point where, uh, you know, every single episode that we have recorded has been done differently. There was even yeah. one in there that we didn't mention. You can probably put it in the timeline yourself. But when I used uh, OBS the first time, I actually did just record my video on my computer. And then I just sent him the video file. We did that once and he still has to stitch it together. But that'll yeah. be, you know, a premiere thing where you just got to slap it on, do an alignment. That's not hard. You know, it's not real time alignment. You can just beat match it like you're producing on Ableton, right? So you just yep. set it up and you render it and we're done. So we know that one's going to work. But uh, we only ended up trying that once until we immediately moved on. And that was like, you know, definitely the most secure option that we had done already, you know, like because we knew that it was going to work. We already know it has worked before he's even done the stitching of the video together because it was so stable. And yeah. yet instantly we moved on to the next step and the next step. And then during this episode, you came up with another idea. So yeah well it's because it's it's bred out of the hatred of me doing those delays in OBS. oh god he has to do them like in multiple instances imagine if like you in ableton if you wanted to delay something longer than like uh you know one beat you had to use multiple delays instead of just one with a knob right so it yeah. goes up to so if you're second. if you've ever used obs before uh i have a bunch of scenes that are all the sources like the video or whatnot and then you use something called uh I think it's something something delay source delay or whatever, and you use that as a filter on the, on the, on the on that scene which you're at. You know, you're adding that scene in and cropping it or doing whatever you're doing to it because you're using it in multiple different scenes. You don't want to have the same camera used on the same one. So I have those delays there, but the thing is that delay filter maxes out at 500 milliseconds, which is infuriating. Yeah, Be because when you have to get up to like eight seconds potentially, so yeah. sixteen of those instances of those plugins. Exactly, and you have to do sixteen of them, and then it, you know it's going to be say it's a eight point two five. So you have to create you know eight of those <laughs> that are of five hundred milliseconds, and then you have to have one more, a ninth one that is two hundred and fifty milliseconds. Then you have to like remove them and add them. It's we have to do math. Like we have to literally do math every time we want to make this stuff for you. So be happy. You know, like yeah. there's a reason we did it in school. All right, it did come in handy. Yeah, adding uh, adding. Well, yeah, it's that... pretty simple math, but like, you know, it's still I, I use it, you know, yeah. on a day to day basis. So I'll math things. Exactly. Well, and and it's not even just for one source. Right. I have to I have to delay my screen recording, which we're not actually showing at all this episode. In this case, it's just my webcam. 
Um, yeah. but then the and mine, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. No, yours is automatically <laughs> Thank delayed. Thank God. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, right, right. That's what we're talking about. Okay. But yeah, I think um, it's. I'm just glad that you know we'll keep working on it. But I think at this point, if next weekend we're good. It's, you know, it only takes about 20 or 30 minutes to get set up. This is really ideally what I was hoping for, because I think it's also going to come across in the episode. You know, for us, it should be, you know, we, we sit down, we have a quick chat, you know, to have our coffees. We've also, uh, one of our rules, you have to go to the bathroom before, because if you drink coffee yeah. and you don't go to the bathroom before, it can be a real pain. Um, yeah. we did an intermission in one. That was the reason why. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, it, I think it actually has an effect on the podcast itself as well. Like this is, I mean, this has been a venting session for me. But if I was talking about yeah. another topic, you know, this would be in my head for sure. You know, it, yeah. It, well, that's why we had to do this tonight because yeah. we were both so mad that it would have felt <laughs> unnatural for us to try and completely switch the vibe. And it's like it's almost more funny for us to just laugh at ourselves yeah. and like enjoy the reality of what this situation is than it would be to try and again be fake and talk about some other random stuff when this is really what's clouding our heads. Yeah, and I think that's really. I mean, we want to capture. We want it to just be off the cuff, natural, and we want to just talk about whatever we want to talk about at the time and not really limit ourselves and try to, and we've learned that over, you know, I think this is our eighth episode, so it's not that mm -hmm. many, but, you know, as you talk for an hour like this, and we list, I, I have been listening back to almost all of them just to try to develop kind of more of a voice. I've realized the more off the cuff, the better, and I guess the less angry and the less time I'm spending setting up, you know, the less angry I'm going to be about it. So if it's just, you know, hit record, 20 minutes prep, we have a quick chat, I think it's going to lead to, you know, the best, best quality in terms of our conversations. Yeah, and this whole thing really, I mean, again, just to relate it back to audio production, like this is a live set. You know what I mean? This is essentially the same thing as building a live set. You know, if you're going to do something yeah. in Ableton, you have to start from a default template. And for us, our de default template is literally a computer, just, you know, desktop. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. our default template, right? So figure it out. Um, so we built this thing and it's like, as you build these things, you try one way, you try one way, you yeah. figure out what you don't need, you figure out what works. And, and every time you do it, you're not starting from scratch. It may seem like we're doing full revamps, but we're doing them with like, you know, educated, like, you know, material. We're not doing it just out of random trying everything. Yeah. So every single time we do it, we get a little bit better, better. We get a little bit better, a little bit faster, a little bit of cooking better, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit better. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and, and, uh, it's getting to the point where it's stable and now this is the, this is really the stability test to see how long it can last in one configuration without being a problem because yeah. we need to get past the having problem stage. Yeah. And once you get past the, I'm having problem stage it after that is the, we're making improvements stage. Yeah. Right. And so today I think we did a very big dent in the having problems because we've literally seen them all. And now we, mm -hmm. we know where to look. We know how to solve them quickly because it's the same things. You know, we're not going to be troubleshooting like completely new things every time. It's always yeah. you know, video <laughs> problems or audio problems or syncing. You know, it's, we're, we figured it out at this point. And so now we're going to see how long uh, we can keep it going and then make sure it's good to go uh, live. Exactly. Yeah, because I think that ideally... You know, it'd be great to have live feedback from an audience. I mean, we don't need that many people listening, but it'd be really cool to actually have, you know, live people listening to it so we can actually answer questions. Because ideally, we'd like to have, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, audience feedback as well. You know, how we've kind of talked about that in previous episodes, but having, you know, either questions on our Discord where people kind of, they can say, hey, we I've got this thing here. I mean, whether or not it's like feedback, which is kind of the traditional thing you do on a music live stream or... Uh, you know, anything, any questions about participation, participation in that exactly just so there's kind of a bit of a feedback loop there where we can actually interact with the interact with our audience. And I think that's where a live stream is really interesting because we're recording and there's probably a three or four second delay and people can comment directly on it. And so it's almost like yeah. having a conversation, which is what I love about live streaming production as well, because it's real time. Somebody can ask you a question and then right after that, you can just do it in the DAW and show them in really high quality audio and all that stuff. So. Um, yeah, and it's kind of funny how many problems it adds immediately when you just double the amount of, like, people that are involved in this. Because the yeah. weird thing is, like, it's basically, like, we are trying to stream together at the same time on Twitch as yeah. if we're in the same room, you know? Because And in order for us to do that, we have to somehow, you know, do the, everything we just explained for the whole video, right? So it's not as easy as it seems. Because if it was just me and him in the same room, there would be literally no issues, no. you know? It'd be super... Well, just, we'd just be sitting there doing it live in a, in a room. And to <laughs> be, be no fair, problems. we the other option is we could just do a Google Hangout and we could just yeah. video video or the screen, our laptops. But the thing is, that doesn't work because we do sound design very often. And... You know, I have to be able to say, hey, listen to this difference between the stereo image. Yep. 
back and, to the original. You know, that's you know, then also the frequency range. That's like you just you can't do that kind of work um with any other setup. You need to have full or very close to 320 kilobits per second audio. And you also need 1080p because you can't read the user interface of the DAW in 720. Or you can, but it's really crappy. Like it's it's you uh, it's not yeah. convenient. No, it's it just it, doesn't do the job. Yeah, it's especially if you're doing any kind of tutorials or whatnot. And I, I it's definitely just a good benchmark uh, to have. Yeah, I mean, especially because, I mean, you look at how many people are making content these days, and especially right now, everybody's trying to make content, right? And, like, yeah. that's always been the thing is, like, it doesn't matter. It does matter how good your content is. If it's really good, it doesn't It doesn't need to be perfect. But, like, when you're competing against, like, 90% of people out there who know how to work their cameras, they have good gear, they have good setups, like, we need to make sure that it is at least of, like, similar quality to what everyone else is expecting. Because this day and age, we can't get away with, like, putting up a 480p video with terrible sound quality. Like, no, we need to be able to stream at the same quality everyone else is watching. Or no one wants to watch it because they can yeah. watch something that looks better. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, there is something to be said about, you know, just having doing, you know, having good conversations. Obviously, the conversation quality will be a draw. But, you know, for us, we don't really have any audience right now. We have, you know, some fans here or there and family and friends, but we do want to meet a certain level of quality there. So, yeah, it's exciting that we're kind of, you know, I would say back in November, we had this original conversation and you were the one that said, okay, we're doing video. And I'm like, okay, well, that's going to be, I knew how much of the pain yeah, that was going to be. It took, it took a little while. But it makes sense. Like, it's not that a, a I under, as soon as you said it, I was like, yeah, we need to. It's it's just All right, I got to interject here for a second. So I made a huge mistake, and I drank a bunch of coffee before this stream. So Joel's going to keep talking while I run as fast as I can to the washroom, because if you watch back on the video, you're going to see how bad I have to piss over the last, like, 20 minutes. Yeah, so this is exactly what we were talking about. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty important to not drink a bunch of coffee and water at the beginning of the episode. Um, I, I followed that rule. It seems like Mike did not. Uh, but, uh, I, we've only been streaming for about an hour or so. Um, yeah, I mean, getting back to what we were talking about though, you know, we started this back in November. It's kind of a suggestion back from my sister and she was like, yeah, you know, record the, record those conversations. Cause she would hear it, you know, we would be sitting there kind of talking about, you know, this or that and kind of going to the rabbit hole. But yeah, it's, it's definitely pretty interesting now to kind of see, kind of thinking back and I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. Honestly, it's, it's been a really long process getting it there and it, I've, I spend a fair bit of time it is a part-time thing so you know this isn't my number one thing I also have been working on a live set kind of in conjunction which is which honestly part of all this learning I've been doing for this podcast a lot of it actually relates over to that you know it's all in OBS it's all dealing with video streams and syncing and also having good high quality audio so part of the reason why I've kind of spent all that time is because you know it, it, I'm not just doing it for the podcast I think that streaming is kind of the future for content creation, at least when it comes to having another avenue for people like me, unless you want to hire somebody to do video for you, um, you know, streaming is really the easiest way to do that at a, at a low time sink. You don't have to spend a huge amount of time to create some content, which can be of questionable, questionable quality, but at least there's something there to actually be able to connect with an audience. So it's cool looking back now, being able to kind of analyze that because it's, it's only been, well, what is it, March now? So been five months maybe my math's wrong there four months um but being able to turn it into a reality is it's cool looking back at it and not and just being able to hit record that being said tonight we did we we're not able to just hit record but uh yeah you're back oh man i'm so sorry that was record that was time bad. it's okay i was able to was I, it was it fast it felt long uh maybe like 30 seconds but what it's no way all right, all right. maybe it was longer we'll than that. <laughs> so what did i miss uh, I just did a little recap and talked about how I was proud that, you know, yeah, you should be man. It's that it's set up and, you know, hopefully two hour, two and a half hours will become an hour and then it'll become 30 minutes and we'll just be able to do this regularly, which is the yep. goal. And then I'll move back to Vancouver and none of it will have mattered at all. No, I, I don't know. I think it's, this has more, this has more value than just for us. I think, you know, yep. I'd like to make this a bit, it's tough because obviously we're like pulling a bunch of random applications together and just running them all on a Windows computer. Um, but ideally, it'd be my dream is to have some kind of a t a push button. Obviously, I I don't think I could develop that in software, but ideally, having some application that just does this all automatically and does all the latency compensation automatically. Because technically speaking, I'm just doing a bunch of manual work, so somebody should be able to develop something that does this. Um, yeah. And you know, it doesn't really matter how much the delay is. Like it, the delay could be 30 seconds. Just wait till all the sources come together. And then yep. sync them all up using a clock. I don't know how to do that, but it, that would be amazing if somebody could create that because I've thought about 
doing a, a tool that just does podcasts as well. And, you know, you can record because you, you, you'll hear those podcasts where it's like one person has a really good mic and the other person's on Skype. And it's like, oh, that it, it's not terrible, but it really, you know, sometimes it's fun. <laughs> well, and sometimes when you listen to podcasts, it's actually the person's voice that is in, interesting. Just the some people have nice, soothing voices. And that's actually a, a key selling point of the podcast. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that's actually funny. Yeah, Especially if it's audio. About it. If it's audio only, that makes a big difference. But yeah, you gotta have a nice, soothing, low voice. I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> I gotta hide that button somewhere else that's not so obvious because I want to just be able to fucking whip it out and be like, "Yo, what's good?" You, you, know? <laughs> you need to get a foot switch, dude. Oh, dude, I could, I could. Oh, it's so <laughs> worth it. It's so worth it. Oh my god, dude. Because I, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm getting that for the stream. I, I'm getting it. 100, 100. I'm gonna figure that out. But make it so that it's really slow, so you can just slowly pitch it down over the course of like a period of time. <laughs> I could. My hi hat pedal for my drum set will do that. It's it's got a it's ramp. Yeah. Anyways, I'm pretty tired here. It's probably pretty late for you. We we're an hour and ten minutes in. I think that's been pretty good. Been great. Um, it's been nice. I feel I feel okay now. I feel yeah. good. I still have some That's anger. Necessary. I think I'm gonna go have a beer, maybe eat some food, maybe uh do some push ups, get the testosterone, the anger out. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, no, that was good. That was good. Word. Okay. Well, thank you guys for Thanks. anyone who watched this. Uh yeah, I appreciate it. And uh we do have the Discord up as well. So if you have any questions or uh you know anything of that regard we have a couple different sections in there so if you could actually uh if you have a question you want to ask us just uh just drop by the discord we're in there pretty often whether or not it's just kind of talking um you know we're in there with friends so if you, you want to kind of talk to us directly that's probably your best option yep Great. yep hit us up we're around and accessible well on that note i'm gonna play the outro music all right peace or not there we go with one more.